hometown boy who made good in his own way, painting haunting scenes of the rural South and his own city, New Orleans. Not really realistic, not quite abstract, but always distinctive. The Roland Golden Way. He's the only American artist to be exhibited in a one-man tour of the Soviet Union in history. Roland Golden, our guest tonight on First Person. The painting you saw was entitled Halloween Season by our guest Roland Golan. And the arrow, I assume, points straight forward to even bigger things with your New York exhibit. You have well, thank you. Up. Thank you. I hope so. Yeah, I've got a show opening in New York at the National Arts Club in October. And before I forget it, because we will get questions and calls, uh, your work is handled and exhibited at the Reinecke Gallery. Reinecke Gallery yeah. on Dauphine Street. Yes. In the French Quarter. Yeah, that's right, in the French Quarter. And uh, Edna Reinecke is the director there. I've been with him for about four years, and they do a very good job. And they're quite Hopefully right. somebody will drop by and see them. <laughs> well, I, I certainly hope they will, because they're in for a treat. You can't really do it justice, because in some cases, even with the best of slides, you lose a little tone, yes. like there was more pumpkin color in that's that right. Halloween arrow. Yes. And that gives it that Nothing drive. replaces seeing the original piece. We have only a little time, but I thought it might be fun to share with our audience one of the techniques you use in creating this abstract realism you talk about, and also the contrast is, okay. is stark here. You start with photographs, right? Uh, most of the time. Uh, the, the two photographs you're looking at came from two different places, and uh, I, I was looking for an excuse to create grids, uh, basically. So I took uh, these two photographs and, ju and juxtapositioned the, uh, the chair and the railing in front of the landscape or the city townscape that you see there with the truck. And I think we have the value drawing that was produced as a uh, result of these two photographs. I do a pencil drawing from the photographs where I put them together, rearrange things, so that it's a, every little negative space between the objects is, is as important as, as a positive object itself. And this is something people who are not um, perhaps tuned in to art or don't know as much mm -hmm. about it aren't aware of. The space between those railings and all those crosses and all is very important. It's a series of grids. It's called, in fact, Small Town Grids is the title of the painting. And this is the painting itself, uh -huh. which uh, came from the drawing. So it's a, it's a multiple stage uh, development of a work, which uh -huh. is uh, typical of the way I develop a painting. Start yeah. with an idea and evolve into the finished work. You know, many people who uh, enjoy romantic art or expressionist or impressionist, I should say, art, and it is it can be beautiful in the hands yes, of someone. It, yes, it can. Like, uh, well, Charles Reinecke did some beautiful yes, things. Yes, Charles uh, Reinecke. But there's terrific. so many different forms. Here, the geometrics are fascinating, plus sometimes a hidden meaning. Yes. You're not afraid to make social comment. No. <laughs> you are certainly not alienated by your environment, except where it threatens to be torn apart. And I think you said, I'm going to quote you, if the environment which accounts for my motivation is destroyed, then the motivation will also be destroyed at least in that form. That's and that does that's offend you, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. It does offend me. And it should really offend everyone. Uh, not all uh, change is progress. Progress means change, but it doesn't always, it doesn't change. This does. My saying is that uh, progress definitely means change, but change does not necessarily mean progress. Good way to put it. You've been compared, and comparisons definitely are odious, particularly in the art world, because everyone is an individual. But with Wyeth, among others, in, in certain ways. Yes, uh, particularly right. back in the 60s, when I was m even more realistic, mm -hmm. I was compared to Wyeth. And I, it, it was just an accident. I didn't even know who Andrew Wyeth was, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen any of his paintings. For the longest time, it was considered uh, among collectors very important to collect foreign painters, painters dead two, three, or four centuries, in many cases masters, in some cases not. Yes. Is there any movement to rediscovering American artists, living and dead now? Well, I think so. Uh, there's there an excellent museum at the, uh, uh, exhibit at the museum right now, the World's Museum of Art, of a, a private collection, a Swiss collector that I went Is to. Sunday night to be, and it's totally uh, American artists, uh, going back from the early a uh, late uh, 18th century through all the way up to photorealism, or practically up to the current times. And I think American art is being more and more appreci appreciated around the world right now. That's interesting. Uh, I, uh, uh, in our area, you know, art, like a lot of other things, is in a bit of a uh, remission state, I guess is the best way to put it right now. 
but I do think American art is a very powerful force and that hopefully we're... What, one thing uh, that has entered into uh, the, the art buying uh, business is corporate buying. Uh, biz, uh, corporations mm. are beginning to buy paintings and, de and develop collections. And this has done a lot to help the artist. Uh, mm -hmm. Artists really do need help, uh, you know, and somebody has to buy their paintings. And mm -hmm. most artists are not businessmen. I fortunately have been a better businessman than most artists. Right. Uh, but, uh, and I have a, a wife who's an excellent business person and, and does most of that for me. But uh, artists need patrons, they need galleries that can sell their paintings. And an artist does not want to paint something to sell. He wants to paint, if you're really an artist, to express yourself. Didn't artists at one time, oh, not much longer than 100 years ago, have perhaps a greater status? Oh, absolutely. Within the community? Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, back in the times of the Renaissance, uh, artists were, uh, when the term masters was used so much, yeah. uh, very high standing, and he, he was a very, uh, in most instances, affluent person compared to what the majority of the people, how the most of the majority of people lived. Mm -hmm. uh, this was true, I'd say, on up until uh, sort of the, the, the Van Gogh phenomenon, when uh, everyone likes to use Van Gogh as the, as the reason why artists should be poor and, and hungry and do without in order to be a real artist. Well. Uh, there have been an awful lot of great artists that didn't do that, or maybe they did it for a certain period in their careers. But um, you know, Monet became well off. Degas was never really bad off. Uh, I think it's uh, it's just a romantic idea. Uh, it, it doesn't really degrade your talents to make a little money and have a family that you can support and send them to school and so forth. Right? Well, I hope just not. Just like other folks. I hope not. I mean, other people are making livings at their profession. They are. So why shouldn't painters? Roland, good to see you. Thank you, Mel, for really, having me on. It really was nice having you as my guest. I've admired your work personally Thank for you. some long time. Going back to that Civil War exhibit, which showed the stark, empty agony and anxiety of people at war, and it went far beyond the Civil War. Thank you, Mel. Right into the Vietnam. Appreciate it. We'll close with a montage of Roland Golden's paintings and see you next week. Same time. <laughs>